Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's going on, younger people? Orel Moody here, doing a Q&A on public and professional speaking. So, pretty excited about it. We're going to be doing um, answering your questions, making sure you get whatever you need answered. Um, really excited about it. So, I'm going to wait for Facebook to build the community up. We'll start asking, um, taking some questions and all that kind of fun stuff. And as we do that, I'll give you some background on myself. So, I'm wondering. Where are you right now? What is all this behind you? So just so you're not distracted by the background, this is a uh, kind of a cloud space that was uh, transformed into a soundproof recording area. So it just gives me a little bit of privacy. It allows um, when I record podcasts or webinars or anything like that, it gives me the ability to just have, you know, the sound, um, you know, not so crazy. And it's just my little... Uh, fixed way of doing it. So what I want to start off with is just asking you questions like, you know, what is it that you wanted? What is it that you were hoping to get from this? Are you interested in doing more public speaking just as a sense of um, building the public speaking skill? Or are you interested in professional speaking? The distinction between the two is um, you get paid to professionally speak in public speaking. You can do it for free. You can do it as part of your job. You can do it as part of your business, uh, but you're not looking to necessarily get paid for it. So it's kind of two different distinct categories. They both interweave and, and overlap, but they work really well. Um, some background on myself. I am a uh, professional speaker. I've been doing this for over 10 years now. Uh, I've spoken to over uh, 48 states, over half a million people during that time, five countries. I've spoken at colleges, high schools, uh, entrepreneurship classes, entrepreneurship events for corporations, associations. It's been a huge um, mix. And that's what I love about it, that I haven't been caught in just one particular you know, niche per se, but I've been able to shed, uh, share a message with groups that as I evolve, as I change, as I adapt, I can also adapt my message and my lesson and who I'm reaching. So professional speaking to me is one of the best ways to make a huge impact and a big difference. It allows you the chance to um, impact people in a powerful way, in a very quick way, which is what's really cool. You know, in an hour keynote, you know, you can literally connect, transform, and leave a message with someone that will forever um, impact them. So it's something I'm really excited about. It's something I'm really hoping to, to help a lot more people do because we need way more positive messages in the world. If you really take a look at society as a whole, right, um, Man, it's just, uh, <laughs> we have way more negative images, way more negative messages that are infused in our society than we do positive ones. So I'm on a campaign, if you will, of getting more positive and more people sharing positive messages in the world. Because if we can overcome all the negative emotions, uh, the negative content and negative, you know, all that stuff with positivity, the world's a better place. And I think that's what we all want to do. So that's a little background on me. Um, this is about you though, so I want to hear from you. You know, we have the Youngry audience here. These are folks who are young, who are hungry, who are ambitious, who want to make things happen. And I want to hear from you, so I want you to start typing in your questions. Whatever I can do to help, I will do. I'm not going to give you like fluffy answers, I'm going to give you straightforward or like really specific stuff. So, whatever you need, let me know. Ask the question, I'll be happy to help. So, I'm going to leave it up to you. I will do the awkward pause. That happens whenever you're doing a Facebook Live and you have to do a Q&A, which is waiting for people to ask the first question. And there's always that, like, who's going to be the first one? Is it going to be me? What question should I ask? I just came here to observe. I came here to ask questions. I didn't know I had to ask questions. You might be thinking to yourself, but yes, you do. That's the way we all grow and learn. So whatever questions you have, the odds are other people have as well. So would love to hear from you. All right, we got Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa's question is, do you have any routine that you do before you go up on stage? Yeah, 100%. Uh, I'm a big believer that the mentality of, um, you know, speaking is not very different than the mentality of sporting events, right? So what I mean by that is 
you would never imagine playing a big football game or a big basketball game or whatever is your sport, just waking up, rah, yawning, going, all right, I guess I'll go out there and play, you know, the championship game or something. No, like, you would be like, yo, I got to go all in. I give, like, 100% of my effort and energy, and you have to get in the right mindset. So, you know, I've come up with a specific routine. Is one, you know, I go through my talking points in my head, like, here's my opening, here's my start. Um, here's, you know, my call to action. Here's what I want people to take. Here are the activities I'm going to do to engage people, right? So I go through those, like, as a, a um, run-through. And then I go into the bathroom, I look in the mirror, and I get myself hyped up. You know, if anyone's ever been to a UPW event, Unleash Your Power Within by Tony Robbins, they have a thing called a move. So I have a move, and it's like... <laughs> I do my move and then I look in the mirror and I say the same speech to myself over and over which pretty much says there's someone in the room that is depending upon you giving your best and I tell myself this is going to be the best presentation in the history of any presentation that's ever been given up until this moment in time and it's always weird when I tell people that in public because they go do you really think your presentation is better than Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream no, I'm not stupid, right? Like, that's one of the greatest things. I'm not saying that, like, I'm better than him. But if my mindset is, my goal is to give the best presentation that's ever been given in the history of presentations, if that's my mindset, even if I fall short, which I most likely will, that's what I'm striving for. You know, a lot of people, when they go out to professionally speak or publicly speak, they say, well, if I can get one person, if I could just impact one life, then I made a difference. And I, I don't subscribe to that. Mine is this is going to be the most groundbreaking, the most powerful, the most awesome presentation that has ever been given ever. And if that's what my bar is, that's where I aim. And then I imagine if everything I've ever done before this presentation didn't exist, and after the presentation I would die and there would be nothing for me to give to the world, that this one presentation was my only gift to the world. All of the preparation I did, this was it whether it's a sales meeting, whether it's a motivational, whether it's a training, if this is all that people would know me for, how would I perform if I knew that to be true? That's the place I come from. And I just start doing my move, and I start going, yes, 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 and doing my move. And by the time I'm ready to go, I mean, by the time I get out of that, you know, private corner, the bathroom, where I'm doing my hypo speech, I'm ready to brick wall. So when I come into the room to present, the energy I have automatically takes over the room. And there's no question whenever I walk into a room that people will look at me and go, that's the speaker. And that's what you want to do whenever you are showing up somewhere. You want people to be like, that's the guy, that's the girl, that's the person we came here to see. And you have to own that first. And that's my routine to get into the right mindset. So we got a Lorenzo Santos. What's up, Lorenzo? Um, Lorenzo's question was, wondering who your influence is in public speaking. Um, also, who do you think is one very underrated speaker? Um, I have lots of people I admire. People I admire for lots of different reasons. Um, so I admire people actually very good with people. So I have Will Smith, like on the top. I mean, he not be a public speaker per se, but his swag, his charisma, right? So Will Smith very much um, influenced me. Dave Chappelle. Uh, a lot of people go, Dave Chappelle's a comedian, but Comedians are great deliverers of stories. They're great in bringing you on a ride, a really good one. You know, the, the Dave Chappelle's of the world, the Kevin Hart's of the world. They're really great at telling stories that are funny, engaging, but also bring you in. So I love watching them. Those are people that I spend a lot of time watching. Tony Robbins, I spend a lot of time watching him. You know, on a personal level, I have a great friend named Jonathan Sprinkles, incredible presenter. Um, so those are people that I have been influenced by and who, you know, I look to gain things from. And as in terms of who I think is very underrated, um, that's a great question. Um, there are some really great people out there that most people just don't know about because their, you know, content is, you know, specific, unique, or to a specific demographic. So, you know, I can say there's people like Bert Gervais, who, you know, is a friend of mine who I think is a very amazing speaker. Dwayne Spires, um, another name that my, many people may not know, but is incredible at what he does. So those are people who I love, who people may not know about, but do really, really great work. Um, another question from Lorenzo was... If you were to give someone five steps from going from zero to going on tour for public speaking, what would those five steps look like? Great question. Um, and just so you know, at the end of this, I, I put together just, it's brand new, a very free training on how to um, 
get your first paid speaking engagement. So it's kind of a long process, but here's what I would recommend from a very short perspective. Number one, you have to get clear on what problem can you solve for people, right? So a lot of people say, oh, I can speak about anything. I speak about motivation. Well, what does that mean? So the first step is get extremely clear on what problem can you solve. The second step is who needs that problem solved, right? So the example that I like to give is if you can solve problems for parents and you say, oh my gosh, I have this incredible problem solving, you know, ability for parents. Amazing. Great. The next step is where do all those people gather? I don't know where parents gather, right? Like what's the group or association that all parents are a part of? I don't know. So even though you have a great problem and a great group that can be solved with that problem, you don't know where those people are or how to find them. So the next thing you want to do is, so step one, what problem do you solve? Step two, who needs that problem solved? Step three is, where can you find these people? Are they a part of a, a group, an association, a, um, uh, you know, a community? Being able to easily find them is key. Step four is, once you have um, the problem you can solve, who needs the problem solved, you know where to find them, you have to be certain they already have a budget set aside to actually pay you to speak. So for example, if I could speak to um, business owners about 15 ways to choose the right um, furniture color, right? Um, you, it's a big problem, like the right furniture color increases productivity and focus and you know blah 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 and all that jazz, right? But if they aren't walking around thinking, how do I get a better, you know, it's a hard sell. So a lot of people walk around with this great idea that they think people need and they try to force them to get it. Instead what you do is you find where are they already spending money on training? Leadership development, sales, you know, increasing revenue, decreasing costs, you know, culture, that kind of stuff. Budgets are already set up for that. So you want to look at what you do and fit it into a budget they already have, right? So one, problem you solve. Two, audience. Three, where do they gather? Four, do they have the budget and are they willing to spend it on you? And then five, the next step is finding out who the specific decision maker is and then contacting them, whether it's email, whether it's going to conferences, whether it's going to their office, whether it's direct mail. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can go about it, and they all have different results and have different benefits and different costs. But those would be the five steps. Like if you can get clear on who you, what problem you solve, clear on your audience, clear on where they gather, clear on they willing and have a budget to pay for it, and you figure out your strategy for getting in front of them. That's what I've used over and over to speak. Whether it's in college markets school markets, um, businesses, associations, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, Rachel, uh, what do you do like? Uh, great question, Rachel. So I have never worked with the Speaker Bureau. Um, my my initial take on um, Speaker Bureaus is pretty simple. You know, like if you're on James and you want to go on a speaking tour, like, of course, the speaking bureau is going to be great, right? They're going to love you. They're going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we need you because they, like, they're so big, they don't actually need a lot of um, help getting a speaking. Engagement. Like, if they just put out an email saying LeBron James is doing speaking, people is going to be like, yo, like, we want to book him. But like for the everyday non-celebrity, the everyday person who doesn't have a number one bestseller book or doesn't have a huge following or big TV following. Saying, oh, I'm going to go to a speaking bureau and they're going to get me booked. It's pretty difficult. It's, the, the, you know, it's kind of like a speaking bureau wants you, but you as a speaker don't need them. And you're really, really part of them because you're going, you guys can take care of the stuff I just don't want to take care of. So if you have a very big following and you're very popular and you're very successful and you know, you've got more opportunities coming at you than you can personally handle, I think a speaker's bureau is a great opportunity for you. Because they'll take care of a lot of the nitty gritty. But if you're someone who doesn't have a big background and doesn't have a big following, a speaker bureau is not necessarily going to give you the bang for the buck that I think you might want it to. Because what most people do is, I have this amazing message, here bureau, you figure it out. I don't recommend it. I recommend getting clear on what your systems are, going through it yourself. Um, I've always been self-represented and I do it myself because I'm also you know, entrepreneurial in that way. Doesn't mean it's out of the 
question that as I grow that I won't you know, hand it, but I might tailor take on it. Um, other people might have a different opinion, but that's just my opinion, all just an opinion. All right, we got Sigma Alpha, Sigma Upsilon move, very cool. Uh, so we are a student entrepreneurship group at Cal State Fullerton. What's up, y'all? Um, what are ways students can start public speaking careers inside and outside of school? Absolutely great question. I started speaking when I was in school, so you can actually do this. And I've helped people and um, given them advice on how to get started while they're um, in school. The best thing I can recommend doing is one, starting where you are. You know, uh, you throw events, you do work. So just you know, do public speaking engagements based on the work that you do. Next thing is contact high schools. Um, Middle schools are going to be the easiest place, I think, for any college student to speak because you represent like the ultimate. They want you at, um, their students in college. So if you come to high school, middle school, and you say, "Hey, listen, we, we understand middle school students. We know what they're going through. We want to show them how college has been a part of our life and how it's impacted us, and we want." Um, you know, you to be a part of that, bring us in to speak. They're going to be like, oh my God, yeah, definitely. So if you were a school, uh, a, a college student, I would contact high schools and middle schools about college. You know, you can talk about a lot of different subjects. It doesn't have to be just like the college application process. It could be about the mindset. It could be about overcoming obstacles. It could come about motivation. It could come about creating a future, you know, choosing your career path. There's a lot of things you can do, but being that representation is going to be like really cool for people. I think my, my thing went out. Okay, there we go. We're good. Um, somebody asked me where I'm at. Like, you may have missed it in the beginning. I'm in, um, this is my office space, and uh, converted a uh, uh, closet into a soundproof room so I can do recordings in here and get a little privacy and stuff. So it looks a little funky, but it's great for sound and um, lighting and stuff. So that's where I am. Uh, uh, next question. We got David Gloria with a player. All right, David asks... I'm using my identity as a young professional, first-generation Latino model, uh, aspiring role model. Advice for building my personal brand in young audiences. I've learned a next -gen Latinx group of 120 members. How can I give them value and power? You know, what I'll tell you, David, is get very clear on what you're offering people as your benefit for being involved. So you want to be a, a great role model. Great. What are you being a role model for? Are you being a role model for making good choices? Are you being a role model for education? Are you being a role model for overcoming adversity? You know, so a lot of people say, like, I want to be a role model. Great. What are you being a role model for? You want to get very clear on what's called your value proposition. So many times, like, if I reach out to someone and say, hey, book me to speak, well, what's their first question? What do I think? 